So last week, I posted this video where I tried to beat Super Mario Bros without touching a single coin, but I did it using Mayro's remake in Super Mario Maker 2. I genuinely did not expect people to be upset by that. Heh, <laughs> this is cheating, it would have been way more compelling to watch you attempt the original and work around the outdated physics. You should play the original, I'm not a hater, but it was pretty cheap you used Super Mario Maker 2. I don't agree with you using Super Mario Maker 2 remake of the game, should've just went with the OG. You suck, Nico! You should play the actual original Mario game! Alright, you think I can't play the original, huh? Epic Gaming Nico Mode activated. Let's do this. The rules are simple. We are going to be playing the actual Super Mario Bros. for the NES and we are going to try to beat the entire game without touching a single coin. You see this lovely coin counter up there? Well, we're going to try to keep it at zero. And to avoid this video being over after only 3 minutes, we are not going to be using warp pipes. So we're going to have to go through all of the levels one after another. Now that everything has been set, let's just jump into it. World 1-1 is our first stop, and you bet that this one is not difficult at all. As long as you don't enter the warp pipe into the secret zone, you'll be all good. 1-2 is also pretty easy, taking place underground, and I did try to go above the entire level to skip all of the coins like I did in Super Mario Maker 2, but I just couldn't get enough speed to go up in that original game, so you know I had to take the normal path underneath those bricks, but it just doesn't contain any annoying coins anyways, so it's no biggie. 1-3 starts off with this segment, and in my Super Mario Maker 2 videos you guys kept complaining that this platform wasn't semi-solid in the original game and that my way of dodging those coins was cheating. There you go. This is how you do it in the original game. It's that easy. You guys happy now? We good? I couldn't get under those coins as Fire Mario, so I had to go back to Tiny Mario in order to fit there, but besides that, everything else was fine. 1-4 is next, and this one doesn't contain a single coin besides Lay Epic Troll Invisible Block over there, but just make sure you don't jump and you'll be okay. 2-1 is super easy and doesn't feature a single coin in your path, so no worries. 2-2 is our first underwater level, and although this one does contain coins, you can easily avoid them all by swimming above or under them. In some parts of the level, you will get kinda sucked down into coins by the water current there, but just smash the A button faster and you'll be all good. 2-3 features lots of complicated spots featuring coins and not a lot of places to dodge them. This section here is very annoying because you can't really go above the coins, so your only option is to go under them, and to do that, you'll have to make a very precise jump. It is very difficult and it took me a while, but it is possible to do it. Make sure you're walking for those final two jumps under those coins and you'll clear this level just fine. 2-4 is the next castle and this one only contains six coins and they're all located over there. Just make a run for it and jump above them all and you'll reach Bowser and clear this castle in no time. 3-1 doesn't contain a single coin in your path, so you know, this one is super easy. 3-2 features two areas that contain some coins, and the first one is super easy to dodge, as you can just go under the coins and it's pretty much that easy to clear the second bunch of coins too, cause they're just located above that pipe over there, so just keep walking and that's it. 3-3 does contain its fair share of coins and you'll have to do some very precise jumps here and there if you wanna dodge them all. Thankfully, there are lots of platforms to help you jump above them, so you won't really have a hard time clearing it coinless. 3-4 is the next castle level and it does contain a grand total of 3 coins that are located way up there for absolutely no reason. Just ignore them and you'll soon defeat Bowser and reach world 4. 4-1 does contain a couple of coins that you'll have to dodge, but if you keep running through the entire level, you'll easily reach the end and clear it. 4-2 is next and starts off with 3 coins over there, so just take the top path to avoid them all. 
There are a lot of coins near the end of the level over there, so you want to make sure the Koopa Troopas walk off the ledge before you go to make sure not to hit them or a block up above and collect one of those pesky coins. 4-3 is a very difficult level, starting off with you having to do a very precise jump above those coins. Actually, you have to make 3 jumps back to back because if you stop in between, you just won't have enough speed to jump above. There will still be a couple more coins to dodge before you get to the end, but these ones are actually way easier, so no worries. 4-4 is up, and this castle doesn't contain a single coin. You basically just have to go through the correct path if you want to reach Bowser and complete the stage. 5-1 is next, and you won't have anything to worry about in this level, as it doesn't contain a single coin, so you just have to beat the level like you normally would. 5-2 does contain a few coins, but they're not in your way or anything, so you can easily dodge them all. I wish I could say the same about this Hammer Bros dude over there. Ugh, I hate him. 5-3 is up, and this one does contain a couple of coins, but you thankfully always have plenty of room to dodge them by going above or under them all. 5-4 only contains those 6 coins once again, but as we saw earlier in the video, you can easily just jump above them all. 6-1 contains a few coins throughout the level, but they're never really located in an annoying place, so it's actually quite easy to avoid touching them. 6-2 doesn't contain a single coin, so this one will be done in no time. 6-3 is such a weird stage, because everything is in grey and white. What happened to all of the colors, dude? Thankfully, this makes it way easier to see the shiny yet deadly coins in your path. This final jump is quite difficult and precise to pull off, but you don't actually have to do it as you can just go under the platform. 6-4 is next and this one doesn't contain a single coin, so it's going to be done in no time. 7-1 is actually quite easy for this quest as it doesn't feature a single coin on your way, so just avoid those hammer bros and make your way to the next level. 7-2 is the second underwater level of the game and basically, just like the first one, you have lots of space to swim and dodge all of the pesky coins. I do have to say that you'll have to wait for some cheap cheeps to move out of the way while dodging the bloopers, but that's about it. 7-3 is next and it's another level where you run on a bridge that is full of evil cheap cheeps. Once again, there are a couple of annoying coins and this difficult part from earlier is back again. It is a very precise jump you have to make, but it is actually possible just like the first time we did it. 7-4 is one of my least favorite level. It is a maze type dungeon where you have to guess the correct path in order to proceed or else the game just resets the level and you keep playing forever. The only good thing about those levels for this quest is that they do not contain a single coin, so yeah. 8-1 is a pretty difficult level, but just because of that one segment that involves a very precise pixel perfect jump. Basically, you have to jump above this giant pit, but as you can see, there are coins up above there, so jumping too high will make you collect those, and jumping too low will make you fall down in that pit. I have literally tried this part for hours, but I eventually managed to get a working strategy. Basically, if you move to the right, you can see that three Goombas are walking off the ledge over there. Make those three Goombas appear, then quickly go back to the left and wait for the perfect moment to then jump on top of the third Goomba to avoid the coins up there and bounce on it to make your way across the pit. Wow, that was insanely difficult to do and I don't even know if I could do it a second time to be honest with you. It took me hundreds of tries to pull it off, but it is actually possible to do it and it makes you feel like a true epic gamer. I just never want to do it ever again. 8-2 doesn't feature a single coin, so it's an easy one. And it's the same thing for 8-3, no coins in here. Welcome to the final level, 8-4, and this one does feature one problematic part. Basically, you have to go up that pipe in order to finish the level. But the Koopas over there do not make you jump high enough if you try to bounce on their head. Normally, you'd want to hit the invisible block to move up, but this bad block gives one evil coin. Remember in the Super Mario Maker Remake Challenge video how I told you that I didn't like this first Super Mario Bros game because you can't actually move back to the left once the screen advances? Well, would you believe that we are going to have to abuse this mechanic in order to go up that pipe? 
basically you have to move the screen very slowly so that you have a little bit of space in between the left part of the screen and the pipe there. Doing this will allow you to do a double jump and reach the top. Wow. And with that done, we can just reach the end and defeat the final Bowser. And there we go. We did it. Is it possible to beat Super Mario Bros for the NES without touching a single coin? Yes, it is. It wasn't the most difficult challenge ever, maybe except for that pixel perfect jump on a Goomba in 8 1 and that glitch I had to use in 8 4. To be fair, it was actually harder than the Super Mario Maker 2 Mario Bros. remake I attempted last week, but not that much. Hopefully, all of you people that wanted me to play the original game are now happy that I did, and next time I'll try to play the original before the remake. What is going on everybody? It's -a me, Nico, and we are back again in one of those very original videos where we play a Mario game without collecting a single coin. Let's be real, these coins are lying around everywhere in all of the Mario games and it's disgusting. No one knows for how long this coin has been sitting there and you wanna collect it and risk catching a disease? What the heck is wrong with you? I'm not taking the risk, which is why today we are going to be playing Super Mario Bros 3 and we will attempt to beat the game without touching a single coin. The rules are simple. Super Mario 3 has this blue bar in the bottom of the game at all time and in it we can see our total coin count. We want this lovely number to remain at zero at all time. Now, Super Mario 3 has the Warp Whistle, which allows you to go to World 8 in a matter of minutes, but that would be boring. We won't be using any Warp Whistles unless really necessary. This means we are going to attempt to beat every level in every world in this game. And throughout the game you will visit Toad Houses and collect some items, which hopefully will be of great use in this quest. Now that everything has been explained, it's time to start the quest and see if it's possible to beat Super Mario Bros 3 without touching a single coin. Let's go! World 1-1 is the tutorial level, so obviously we won't have any problem completing it as the only coins are located over there, but we can just go under them. World 1-2 is kind of the same thing, not a lot of coins in here, usually you'll want to hit the P-switch over there and enter that pipe, but for this quest, I wouldn't do this if I were you. World 1-3 does feature a couple of coins which require to jump above them or to go under them, but nothing that will be very challenging. World 1-4 is the first auto-scroller level, and this one does feature a couple of challenging spots, like this part with the L-shaped blocks where you must squeeze in between using the leaf power-up. Besides that, this level is not really difficult. World 1 Dash Castle is up, and this castle doesn't contain a single coin, so this will be a breeze. World 1 Dash 5 starts off with a fun slide which. Oh, seriously? Mm. This slide leads to coins. How was I supposed to know that? Come on. So just be very careful when sliding down at the beginning, but besides that, the rest of the level has nothing worth discussing. World 1-6 will teach us about a mechanic that I didn't know about in Mario 3. You see, when you hit the end card over there, if there's an enemy on screen, it turns into a coin that you automatically collect. Yay, deja vu. This means that when you see an enemy near the end card, you'll want to get rid of it at all cost. Thankfully, this first enemy here is a Koopa Troopa, so let's just kick it out of here and we're done. World 1 Dash Airship is next, and thankfully, just like the fortress, it doesn't contain any coin. Defeat Larry Koopa and Grassland is a thing of the past. We can now move on to World 2 Desert Land. World 2 1 does feature a couple of coins, but they're all located inside of that pink cage, so just walk over it and you'll be okay. Watch out for this block enemy at the end of the level, and then you're done. World 2 2 does feature a lot of coins that will stand in your path if you stand on this little floating platform here, but thankfully, you can just jump down and swim to safety. World 2 Castle is up, and just like the previous castle in the game, it doesn't contain a single coin. 
World 2-3 is pretty easy at first, that is, until you reach out this end part. So you see, you're supposed to knock those Koopas and use their shell to break the blocks in order to enter the orange pipe over there. But as you can see, the Koopa shells hit some blocks containing coins, which makes you collect 9 shameful coins. There's no way of skipping this level, sadly. Is this the end of the quest already? Well, before calling it quit, I had an idea I wanted to try. If you have a leaf power up, you can use your raccoon tail to break blocks. So I had this idea of getting rid of the Koopa and then breaking all of the blocks myself. But sadly, the space with the two Koopa is so tight that there's no way to hit a Koopa, grab its shell and remove it. But I had one final idea I really needed to try out. So what if we enter this level with a fire flower? then defeat those two Koopas with well-placed fireballs only to go back to the beginning of the level and grab the leaf power-up to then break the blocks using the Tanuki tail. Oh my gosh, it works! I can't believe this far-fetched strategy was the good one. World 2-3 is finally done, so we can move to World 2-Quicksand. This is the infamous level with our buddy the Angry Spooky Sun. The level in itself doesn't feature a lot of coins, but I was kind of afraid of this sun as it follows us throughout the level and eventually gives out a coin when hitting the end card. Thankfully, the sun is not as powerful as it looks, as you can just grab a Koopa shell and just defeat the sun that easily. Yep, problem solved. World 2-4 does feature this really tricky jump in between those two coins over there. I tried many times to do that jump, but I never managed to actually do it. I tried going up the secret path at the beginning, but it's full of coins up there, so I'm not sure this is a better spot for us. Eventually, I just realized that you can get enough speed to just fly above the tricky coins. Wow, why didn't I think of this earlier? World 2-5 is really easy, just make sure you have a Koopa shell to defeat this chain chomp near the end card and you'll be good. World 2-Pyramid doesn't feature any difficult part, so it will be done in no time. World 2-Airship is up and once again, it doesn't contain any single coin, so you can just defeat Morton and this world is done. Welcome to World 3, Waterland, a place where I'm sure we'll find tons of underwater levels. Would you look at that, World 3-1 is an underwater level, but no worries, it's super easy. World 3-2 features those annoying cheap cheats that are very troublesome when trying to crouch under the coins over there. What a bunch of meanies. Just try dodging them while also dodging coins and you'll be done. World 3-3 is divided in two parts, and the first one is quite easy, but this second one does contain a fair amount of evil coins that you must dodge. This part is especially cruel as you can't really do anything about it without a tanuki leaf. Grab one and watch for the tide of the water and then make a jump for it and you will make it eventually. Trust me, it takes a lot of tries and you gotta time it right to make that jump, but it is possible as you can see. World 3 Dash Castle continues the tradition of castles not having any coins, so let's just move on. World 3-4 is next, and there's this pool of water here, where you're supposed to bounce on invisible blocks to be able to climb, but those blocks will give out a coin, so just use a leaf and fly above it. There you go. There's a random Lekidu that pops up near the end, so you'll have to fly to defeat it before hitting the end card to avoid any coins, but you have plenty of space to gather up the speed needed to fly, so it's not a problem. World 3-5 is pretty easy and doesn't contain that many coins, so there's not much to say about it. World 3-6 is easy up until the very last part, which features those spinning platforms that can bounce you right into those three coins. Wow, thank you spinning platforms of death. World 3-7 is pretty easy and features a new kind of enemy, the cutest fishy bubkins ever created. Ooh, they're so cute. World 3-Castle number 2 is up, and guess what? It doesn't feature a single coin! 
World 3-8 is a very annoying level because of this boss bass that keeps swimming left and right, waiting to eat you alive. You'll have to stop and wait at some points for the water level to rise or lower depending on where the coins are located. It's pretty annoying, it's kind of hard, but it's not impossible. World 3-9 is up and it's quite easy, and this is really a relief after the boss bass level that we just did. World 3 dash Airship doesn't contain a single coin, so you'll easily make it to the end to defeat Wendy Koopa, and World 3 is now done. Next up is World 4, Giant Len, and you'll see why it's called that real quick. Everything is big, big pipes, big plants, big blocks, but thankfully, small coins. World 4-1 is not really difficult, as the only coins that could be considered tricky are over there, but you can just glide over it. There you go. World 4-2 is pretty easy too, and doesn't feature any difficult part. World 4-3 does contain some tricky parts, which will require a leaf power-up to clear, as you can't really make it without it. Beside that annoying part, the rest of the level is a cakewalk. World 4-Castle is next, and guess what? No coins. World 4-4 is set underwater, but it doesn't contain any dangerous coins. World 4-5 is also pretty easy, as most coins are up high in the sky, so just don't go there and you'll be good. World 4-6 is next, and it's really easy, and it doesn't feature any difficult coins, so you'll be done in no time. World 4-Castle number 2 is like all of the castles so far, coinless. And to be honest, 4 airship is exactly the same, no coins in here. Defeat Iggy Koopa and World 4 is a thing of the past. Welcome to World 5, Skyland, which funny enough doesn't start off in the sky. World 5-1 starts off quite easy, there's just this staircase part over here where you'll want to get rid of those enemies before you jump, but that's it really. World 5-2 is pretty easy, just make sure not to fall down as there are some mean coins down there. The rest of the level is pretty easy. World 5-3 does contain a couple of very spoopy jumps featuring evil coins, but you can thankfully just run under those coins and use a leaf glide for this one over there. This level will be done in no time. And now, welcome to the brand new quiz game. Will World 5-Castle contain any coins? Cast your vote right now! If you said no, good job, it doesn't have a single coin, yeah. World 5-Tower is up, and the inside part of this tower have no coins at all, but once you arrive outside, there are a couple of coins. This will lead to a couple of tricky jumps, but just crouch jump and glide with the leaf and you'll reach the end of this level in no time. There you go, now we're in the sky. World 5-4 is pretty easy, but for some reason some evil developer decided to put a Lakitu near the end card, so make sure to kill it before touching the card. World 5-5 is next, and here's my tip, do not enter this pipe. Near the end of the level, you'll have to take damage to be small Mario to make it under those very tricky coins, but the rest of the level is pretty straightforward and this level is done. World 5-6 is very tricky, because you'll have to jump on those para beetles while dodging the coins located up there, but the hardest part is definitely this one over there, which requires two pixel perfect jumps in between those coins. This is so difficult, because you need to bounce on those node blocks and land exactly in between the coins, twice! It took me forever, but I can assure you that this is possible. It's just insanely difficult, and requires many hours of trying. You actually need to be small Mario if you want to fit in between the coins. I couldn't do it with Raccoon Mario. And you know what? After suffering through this, you are now small Mario. And what's on the other side of this pipe? A Lakitu. Again! Except this time, you can't just fly to defeat it. 
No, you gotta suffer, dude. You have to make one of the most precise jump ever to land on top of Lakitu, and then you gotta sprint to the end card before he respawns. Because yes, I did not mention this before, but if you kill a Lakitu, it comes back after 5 seconds. How evil can this game get? I eventually was very lucky and defeated Lakitu and won this level. At least World 5-7 is pretty easy, but it does feature a Lakitu at the end again. Thankfully, this time you can have a raccoon suit with you to defeat it. Phew! World 5 Dash Castle number 2 does contain fireballs coming out of the ceilings and floor, but all of the coins are inside those blocks there, so just don't bounce on them and you'll be done in no time. World 5 Dash 8 is a Lakitu level! Yay, more Lakitus to kill near the end card. World 5-9 is an auto-scroller which doesn't contain any coins. But guess who's waiting for us near the end card? Yeah, a Lakitu. World 5- Airship is easy. And guess what? It doesn't feature a single Lakitu. Finally! I was starting to fear that Lakitu would be in every single level until the end of the game. Defeat Roy Koopa and there you go. We can now visit the mandatory Ice Land. What would a Mario game be without a snow theme world, am I right? Welcome to World 6-1, which isn't very tricky. Just have a raccoon suit and you'll beat it easily. World 6-2 has a couple of parts that look tricky, but they're not at all if you just take your time and do some really precise jump. It looks way harder than it actually is. World 6-3 only has one tricky part and it's actually over here, where you have to jump on the right in order to make this platform spawn, but you can't just jump too high as those three coins are located right over there. But yeah, it's not that difficult, just you gotta pay attention, that's it. World 6-Castle is a castle, and can you believe it actually features coins? And really annoyingly plays coins if I can say it. Like, what the heck are you supposed to do here? I tried crouch jumping, I tried jumping above the coins, but yeah, there's nothing I can do, sadly. But thankfully, I collected a lot of items in the toad houses, so a quick P-Wing will save us from this bad level. World 6-4 contains those annoying spinning platforms again, and this part could have been tricky, but this fire chump actually helped me dodge all of those coins. Thank you, my dude! World 6-5 is kind of a maze where you must fly up above to the end of the level, but thankfully it doesn't contain any difficult coins. World 6-6 is quite easy too and will be done in no time. World 6-7 does feature a lot of coins, but they're all placed in a way where you must stand on those donut shaped platforms for long enough to actually grab them. So just keep on jumping over and over again like a rabbit and this level will be a thing of the past. World 6- Castle number 2 is all made out of ice, but it doesn't contain any coin, so yeah. World 6-8 is pretty easy and it's made out of grass. Come on, Nintendo, it's the ice world, did you forget about it? What the heck? World 6-9 is set in an ice cave, but there's not a lot of coins in here, so let's just move on. World 6-10 has a lot of coins that are inside those ice blocks, just don't use a fire flower and those blocks won't melt and you'll be good. World 6- Airship doesn't contain a single coin, so just defeat Lemmy Koopa and you'll end up in World 7 Pipe Land. World 7-1 asks you to climb up this tower using those pipes, but it's quite easy to avoid any coins. Make sure not to use the pipe to go up here, just go around on those bouncing node blocks or else you'll end up in a place full of those ugly coins. World 7-2 does contain a lot of pipes, but it doesn't contain a lot of coins. World 7-3 marks the return of our boy Lakitu, and once again, He's annoying and I hate him. Lakitu, you suck, get out of here. World 7-4 takes place underwater and the level does contain a couple of bad coins, but you can easily fit right under them and you'll be all good. 
So technically for world 7-5 you're supposed to jump to create a bridge out of those invisible blocks but doing so gives you deadly coins so this is a no no. Grab a leaf and fly above the pit and you'll be done with this level. World 7 Dash Castle looks like a big problem for this run. You see all those blocks? Well, you're supposed to hit the P switch to turn them into coins to be able to proceed to the next part. But obviously, we can't do that here. Thankfully, it looks like Nintendo wanted us to succeed as there's a pipe hidden up there which leads right to Boom Boom. Nice. World 7 6 asks you to use those elevator platforms to go up, and there will be coins as you go, but they can be easily avoided, so you don't have to worry about it. World 7 7 is just plain weird. You collect stars and you run on those munchers to get to the end, but what is this supposed to be? Flappy Bird? Eh, this is plain weird, but quite easy. World 7-8 is also pretty easy and doesn't feature any dangerous coins. World 7-9 does contain some coins, but they're all in a path you're not forced to go to. Just go around and you'll be done. World 7-Castle number 2 doesn't feature any coins. And the same can be said for World 7-Muncher and World 7-Airship. Yep, that's it. Defeat Ludwig von Koopa and we are done with this world. We are now in the Darkland, the final world, wow. Let's start off with World 8 Dash Tank, which just like all of the airship levels that we previously went to, doesn't contain a single coin. World 8 Dash Boat is just more of the same, it doesn't contain any coins either. Next up, we have the 3 Evil Hands level. The first one is pretty easy, as it pits you against the Hammer Bros, but no coins are there. The second one is way trickier, as it does contain a lot of coins, so you'll have to make some really precise and very tricky jumps if you want to make it to the end. The third hand level is just like the first one, pretty easy and doesn't contain any difficult coins. World 8 dot Airship is once again a level without a coin. World 8 dash 1 is next and is quite easy in this quest as there are no difficult coins at all. World 8 dash 2 doesn't contain too many dangerous coins, but it does contain the evil son that wants us dead, except this time we have no Koopa shell to defeat it. Uh oh, this is quite a problem and it might be our first mandatory coin to collect. No, so close, why? No, wait a minute, Nintendo is really on our side for this quest as at the beginning of the level, if you go down this quicksand over here, you have a shortcut to the end of the level. Just make sure to take the shortcut while having a raccoon or tanuki suit to dodge all of those coins and then you'll be taken to this part here, which is kinda near the end of the level. But being there via the shortcut skips the part where the sun appears, so we can actually finish the level without the sun. Nice! World 8 Dash Castle is up and it doesn't contain any tricky coins, so we are good. World 8 Dash Tank number 2 is just more of the same and doesn't have a coin. Time to enter World 8 Dash Bowser. The final castle. The epic finale. The great. Oh, it's done. And it doesn't contain a single coin. Alright, okay, cool, sure, whatever. The boss fight against Bowser is pretty easy. And there we go. Bowser is gone. The princess is saved. And Mario is poor. Mission accomplished. Is it possible to beat Super Mario Bros. 3 without touching a single coin? Yes, it is. It's actually quite fun and has a couple of challenging parts. So if you're into that, I suggest trying this challenge. It was really fun to do. About two years ago, back when Super Mario Maker 2 was the cool game of the year, I played a recreation of Super Mario Bros and tried to beat it without a coin. But then, a lot of comments were 
angry about me not beating the original NES version of Mario without a coin. So the week after, I did it. But then, over 3000 people liked this single comment asking me to play the All-Stars version of the game. And I didn't want to do it. I mean, I played the NES version, I played it on Mario Maker 2, heck, I even beat Super Mario Bros 35 without a coin. Anyone remember that game? Well, you know what? I'll give you what you want. You all wanted to troll me? Well, I troll you right back, as today I'll be attempting to beat Super Mario Bros on the All-Stars version without touching a coin. The rules are simple. We are going to be playing Super Mario Bros on the All-Stars collection and we'll try to beat all of the levels without touching a single coin. You see this coin counter on the top over there? Well, we want to keep it at zero. Now that everything has been set, make sure to subscribe and let's just jump into it. World 1-1 is the first level we'll play today. And as you can expect, there's not a lot of coins to avoid in this one. That is, if you make sure never to go down this pipe. Because if you do, you'll be in big trouble and we'll have to collect all of those yucky coins. <sighs> hey, nice Mario face though. 1-2 takes place underground, and I wanted to get on top of those brick blocks there to skip the entire level. But with those coins being placed in very awkward locations, it's not actually possible to do so. Thankfully, playing the level normally ain't too bad. 1-3 takes place on top of these narrow platforms, and some scary jumps will be required in order to beat it. This one over there where we have to crouch jump is particularly difficult and took me a couple of tries, but I can assure you it's all possible. 1-4 is the first castle level, and luckily for us, it doesn't contain a single coin, except for this troll block that is placed there, just to make my life miserable. I hate those invisible blocks. World 2-1 is not very difficult, and most of the coins are super easy to dodge. Just make sure to avoid this epic troll block near the end as you bounce your way to the flagpole, and you'll be good. 2-2 is the first underwater level of the game, and it's thankfully very easy to beat, as swimming gives us plenty of room to dodge all of the pesky coins. Also, before we move on, is it me or is Mario looking a little bit chubby in this version? Huh. Guess he ate too much pasta. Kinda like I did today. 2-3 is the first very difficult level we'll encounter in the quest. The level takes place in the sky on those bridges and there's a bunch of very spooky jumps we have to make under a bunch of yucky coins. This jump in particular is actually really precise as you must jump far enough to reach the platform but also not too high to touch those coins. I can't even begin to tell you how many times I fell down during my playthrough but eventually I managed to do it, only to get to this part with the three little bridges. I'm gonna be honest, I couldn't do that one as Big Mario, so I took damage by hitting a fish and it was way easier that way. Come to think of it, I should have been small Mario from the beginning. Anyways, 2-4 is thankfully way easier and only features a couple of coins over there, but we can get on top of this platform and avoid them all. Bye bye Bowser! World 3-1 is very easy, and can I say how pretty I think this level looks in the All-Stars version, taking place at night and during winter time with snow all over the place? <sighs> it's beautiful. 3-2 is also a very easy level, and there's not a lot of coins on your way to the end. 3-3 does feature a bunch of scary parts, with annoying coins, so you'll have to be very careful and make some very precise jumps to avoid those yucky things. 3-4 features a total of 3 coins, and they are located over there. I think those coins are actually avoiding me at this point, because come on, it's so easy! World 4-1 is an annoying level, but not because of the coins, it's because of that annoying Lakitu that keeps following you around throwing spinies at you. Leave me alone, bruh! 4-2 takes place underground, and we can skip most of the stage by simply jumping on top of it and running till the end of time. 4-3 starts off with one of the most difficult jumps ever. 
you have to jump on the left side of this mushroom platform to then jump on the right side and then onto the other mushroom. But you have to do it all in one go or else you lose your momentum and you won't be able to reach it. Plus, there's two annoying red Koopas on the way. The rest of the level is thankfully easier, but still features a couple of coins to avoid, so be careful. 4-4 is thankfully super easy and doesn't contain a single coin, so we're all good. World 5-1 is not very difficult. There's a couple of annoying enemies, but not too many coins. Heck, I even managed to befriend a bullet bill and I followed him to the flagpole, so that was fun. Oh, he, he died. Okay, well, eh. 5-2 contains a few annoying hammer bros, but not too many coins, so no worries. 5-3 features a few scary looking jumps, but to be honest, they're not that bad. 5-4 only contains those few coins near the end, and we can get on top of the platform before those, so no worries. World 6-1 is easy, but it does feature the annoying Lakitu once again. Get out of here, dude! Go back to Mario Kart or something! 6-2 is also very easy, as it doesn't contain a single coin. 6-3 does feature a couple of coins and some scary jumps, especially this final one with the falling platforms, but it is possible to beat it. 6-4 does not contain a single coin, besides this epic invisible block that gets me every time! Haha, <laughs> so funny Nintendo! Please stop now, okay? I'm not having fun! World 7-1 does not contain a single coin, so you bet this one is easy. 7-2 takes place underwater, and although this one does contain a few coins, they're all pretty easy to dodge nonetheless. 7-3 is very similar to a level we played earlier on the quest, and it does feature the same difficult jumps under the coins, but I managed to clear them quite easily this time. 7-4 does not contain a single coin, so reaching Bowser will be done quickly. World 8-1 had some negative vibes to it, I couldn't actually remember why, until I reached this part. Oh, now I remember. This is the impossible jump that requires you to bounce on a Goomba with the pixel perfect timing! Uh, here's what you need to do here. So you have to jump to move the screen right, in order for the Goombas to start appearing. And once that is done, you have to wait for the first and second Goomba to fall to their doom, and then you have to jump under those coins and bounce on the final Goomba with the perfect timing. If you do it right, it works. It looks easy now that I've done it and showed you in slow motion, but let me tell you, this took forever to pull off. And the worst part is that there's another very difficult jump near the end, but this one was a bit easier, so yeah, we're good to go. Ah, 8-1, I hate you. 8-2 is thankfully super easy and doesn't feature a single coin on your way. Same thing for 8-3, so let's just dodge those hammer bros to reach the final level of the quest, World 8-4. This stage is annoying, as you have to enter the correct pipes in order to proceed through the level and eventually reach the end. The difficult part is over here where you normally have to hit that invisible block to then enter this pipe. But if we do that, we get a Yoki coin! The NES version had an exploit where we could move the screen right and manage to squeeze a jump by just kind of glitching this block. So let's actually try this strategy with the All Stars version and <gasps> it works! Wow, now this is pretty cool. I was actually scared this would be the end of the quest, but no, we can defeat Bowser and there we go. We saved the princess and she gave us a kiss, so that's pretty cool. So, is it possible to beat the All-Stars version of Super Mario Bros without touching a single coin? Well, yes it is! Surprisingly enough, the recreation is actually super faithful to the NES game, as all of my previous strategy that I needed to use in the NES, they just still work with the SNES version, even the screen scrolling trick in 8-4. So now, I've done it. 
I beat the game on NES, I beat the game on SNES, and I beat Mario 35. If I see one single comment asking me to play a different version of Super Mario Bros. without a coin, I will lose it, okay? So don't do it. I'm watching you gamers. I don't know why, but at this point, I think it's safe to assume that I'm really enjoying making Mario poor by avoiding all coins on purpose. I don't really know why, but I mean, it's a hobby for me now, okay? The first game I've ever owned and played is Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo, and I figured I haven't played this game in a while, so why not try to beat this game without collecting any coins? Rules are pretty simple. There's a coin counter on the top right there, and it must remain at zero. This means we cannot collect any coin whatsoever. Super Mario World features Dragon Coins, which are bigger coins with Yoshi's face on it. Collecting 5 of those in the same level gives you an extra 1-up life, but as you can see, they do increase the normal coin counter, so we're going to have to avoid those as well. Most of you know that Super Mario World features a Star World, which can be accessed early in the game, and it can bring you right to Bowser, so I'd actually like to stay away from the Star Road if possible for this run, meaning I'd like to try to beat all of the Koopalings while having zero coins. Is it going to be possible? I don't know, we'll find out together. Alright guys, let's begin this quest to save Princess Peach without being able to actually pay for her taxi ride back home. Here we go. Yoshi's Island is our first stop, and the first level is actually pretty easy. There are not a lot of coins in here, so yeah. To complete a level in Super Mario World, you must hit this giant gate at the end. For this run, you must make sure no enemies are present on screen when you hit that thing, because if there are enemies left, they turn into coins, and you know, we want to avoid this at all costs. This giant gate also has this thing that moves up and down, and you'll want to hit it every time, because if you decide only to pass in between the gate without touching the little thing, it will turn into a coin that you automatically collect. Knowing that, just defeat the charging chuck and hit the thing and you're good to go. Next up is the Yellow Switch Palace, and my only tip here is to never push that P-Switch, because if you do, well, uh, I guess, uh, no, no, let's not do that again. Yoshi's Island 2 is the first level to feature our dino friend Yoshi, and it's also the level where I learn about some interesting mechanics in Super Mario World. Usually, when you're riding Yoshi, you'll eat many things, as you know, it is Yoshi's specialty. But doing so in this game apparently turns the enemies into coins that you automatically collect. So here's another rule we're gonna have to add here. You must not eat anything as Yoshi, because it will turn into coins. That's not true for enemies that Yoshi doesn't swallow like Koopa Troopas, so these are good. But you know, for the other enemies, let's just avoid them altogether. Yoshi's Island 3 features a couple of tight jumps, but the fact that we completed the Yellow Switch Palace actually makes our life way easier by creating a bridge of blocks under us if we fall down. Yoshi's Island 4 has water everywhere, so this will be of great help to avoid some coins that would normally be kind of a pain in the butt to avoid. I gotta admit that this part here seemed spooky at first, but just use the P-Switch to create a bridge and you're gonna be good to go. Iggy's castle is up and the first part is pretty easy as coins are all avoidable, but I had trouble with this second part here, cause the problem lie with those coins over there. I tried to crouch jump, I tried to jump above them using this question block, but the only thing that actually worked out was to get hit on purpose to become small Mario and then crouch jump under the coins. The fight against Iggy is easy and on that note Yoshi's Island is done. Donut Plains 1 gives us our first taste of the Feather Cape and with it we can glide to safety and this will prove to be useful to avoid coins and also to defeat enemies near the end gate. Donut Plains 2 is an auto-scroller, but most coins can be easily avoided and it also features a secret exit which allows us to skip half the level. The Green Switch Palace once again features a P-Switch, but this one ain't really dangerous, so you can hit it without any problems. Donut Ghost House's only danger comes from this P-Switch that makes a bunch of coins appear, but it's not required to hit that switch to finish the level, so let's just skip it for now. 
Donut Plains 3 is kind of tricky at some parts because of the rotating platforms and I kind of lost Yoshi like an idiot, so bye bye fellow. Those rotating platforms near the end of the level are pretty scary, but thankfully we can jump above the coins and glide with the feather cape to safety. Donut Plains 4 is not that difficult, although those Galoombas kinda gave me a hard time because they kept hitting me, but besides that this level is easy. Morton's castle almost features no coins at all in the castle, so going up to fight him is a piece of cake. Just for funsies, I decided to go to the secret exit of Donut Plains 1 to see if the Star Road was achievable from here. I unlocked Donut Secret 1, which is an underwater level, but to unlock the next secret level, you're actually supposed to grab the key in that block and use it on the keyhole, but as you can see, this won't be possible without collecting coins, so there's no use trying it. Let's just get back on track to Vanilla Dome. Vanilla Dome 1 is not really difficult, as the coins are not very well placed and are always on a path you can easily avoid. The only tricky coin is the dragon coin near the end, but it's only tricky because you are running so fast and you might not expect it. Jump above it or go under it and you're done. Vanilla Dome 2 is next, and it doesn't take a long time before reaching out this part. Uh oh, I guess this is bad news for the run, right? Well, yeah, there's nothing you can do to avoid this arrow made out of coins, so I guess this level is impossible. But luckily, there's a secret path that can be unlocked in Vanilla Dome 1, so let's just try getting back there and hopefully we can use the secret exit to try to keep this quest going. So the secret exit is actually up there, but there's no way of being fast enough to fly up here as far as I know. The only solution has to be our good old Dino Buddy once again. So go back to this level with Yoshi, and I must admit some parts are pretty tricky with him because remember, you can't really eat enemies or else you get a coin, but eventually you'll make it to this part. Use Yoshi to get a boost to get the vine to come out, and then use him once again to climb up the vine and get to the secret exit. Yeah, this run might not be dead after all. Vanilla Secret 1 is up, and to be fair, all you have to do is climb up to the top like you would in a normal run, because there are not a lot of coins in here. Vanilla Secret 2 is up, and some of the jumps are actually pretty tricky, but luckily you can use those little bombs falling down in a parachute to bounce your way to safety. Defeat all of the Koopas near the end gate, and you're done. Vanilla Secret 3 is easy at first because even though these dolphins could be potentially dangerous, you can swim safely under them up until that last part. There are tons of coins here to avoid, and swimming is out of the question this time because of this annoying enemy that wants you dead. At this point, you have no choice but to use the dolphins as moving platforms to jump above the coins. It might be tricky and take a couple of tries to get it, but it's totally possible and actually feels really satisfying to pull off. Vanilla Fortress is up, and this one's pretty easy. There's almost no coins in here. Even the miniboss fight is easy and features no coins, so on that note, we have completed Vanilla Dome, even though we had to use the secret path to do so. Butter Bridge 1 is next, and this one is quite difficult. First off, the level is an auto-scroller, which always is a pain to begin with. This is not the end of your suffering because of these platforms that go down when you stand on them. But when one goes down, the other one goes up, so some really tight and difficult jumps are required to beat the level. Thankfully, this level is pretty short, so eventually it will be all over. Up next is Butterbridge 2, a super easy level that is very welcomed after the stressful one we just completed. Basically, those little flying Super Koopas will be your best of friends to jump above coins. Bounce on them and you'll easily finish the level. Ludwig Castle might be the easiest one so far, as it actually contains zero coins. Nah. There's no coins at all in here. Like seriously, I checked out the footage and I literally saw no coins at all. This world is now over and we will now travel to the mysterious forest of illusion. Ooh, spooky. 
Alright, let me preface this by saying that Forest of Illusion is one of the most boring world you'll encounter in this run because there's almost no coins at all here. Like seriously, besides the P blocks that might contain one, you'll almost never run on any coins while playing the levels in this world. This also applies to Forest of Illusion 2, which takes place underwater. There's nothing here besides dragon coins and they are so easy to avoid it's not even worth talking about it. The blue switch palace does contain coins, but crouch jump to avoid them and that's all. Forest of Illusion 3 also is a place of no coins. There's this single jump here that can be tricky, but I had a feather cape so we're good to go. Roy's castle is next, and the difficult part is this one over here where you need to dodge dragon coins. Look, I know I messed up here, but I managed to do it anyways, even though I hit the spikes. So it counts, okay? Don't start hating on me for that. That was legit. We are now out of the forest and let's move to Chocolate Island. So good news! Chocolate Island 1 does feature coins that we must avoid. Yay, finally some challenge! So this part here requires you to use the P-switch, but doing so puts you in a dangerous situation where there's a jumping chuck and a coin above him. Basically, you have to jump to bait him to do the same thing and then quickly run under him to avoid the coin. So beside that part, this level is easy. Next up is Shoko Ghost House, which features a grand total of zero coins. Yeah, so just play it normally and that's it. Chocolate Island 2 is an interesting level. It contains three different areas that are accessible based on the way you play the game. Area 1 is always the same and isn't really difficult. Um, well, okay, that doesn't count, okay? How could I tell there was an invisible block? That ain't fair. Once you enter the pipe here, you will be transported to different areas based on the number of coins you collected in the first one, but considering we're not collecting any coins here, we'll always end up in here. Area 3 is changing depending on how much time is left on the timer up there. Basically, for this run, we don't want to get to the secret exit, so we'll have to waste some time and enter the pipe in Area 2 when there's less than 249 seconds left. Doing that will allow us to reach the end gate and proceed to the next level. Chocolate Island 3 ain't that interesting. It does feature rotating platforms and a couple of annoying coins, but nothing that will stop us on this quest. Chocolate Fortress is up next and there's no coins in here, so let's move on. Chocolate Island 4 scared me for a second here, as I thought this dragon coin would be the end of us, but luckily there are multiple paths here so we can easily dodge it. The other coins only require you to walk slowly with those sunglasses wearing moles and you'll be good. Chocolate Island 5 is full of blocks and has this P switch here. I'll let you figure out what happens if you press it. Yeah, not a good idea. You still need the P-switch for this part here, so just bring it with you until this part and then use it. Make sure to be as fast as you can because those blocks turn back into dangerous coins when the timer expires. When the castle is up and avoiding coins won't be really difficult here as there are almost none of them. I had a funny glitch that occurred here where instead of being squished by the block I just got teleported in the hole but yeah whatever. Wendy is defeated and we can move on to World Bowser. Well, almost. You see, before entering Bowser's world, we have to complete the sunken ghost ship. There's not a lot of coins in here, mostly boos that keep appearing at different spots, making it a little bit difficult. This next part is scary because you fall at a high speed and can't really see the dragon coins below you. But if you're careful, you can avoid them anyways. The thing you can't avoid though are those coins here. Yup, there's no way of going down without collecting coins in here. I thought there might be a P-switch that could turn them into breakable bricks, but alas, there is none. You heard that right, this level cannot be completed. This is kind of annoying to be stopped so close to Bowser's castle. It really broke my heart. At least we still got to defeat almost all of the Koopalings without collecting coins. Although this could have been a satisfying ending to this quest, I didn't want to give up just yet. Remember how I told you I was going to try to avoid the Star World unless it was really needed? Well I guess now is the time where we'll need to test this strategy out. 
There are multiple ways of entering the star world, so let's try to get there. The forest ghost house could potentially lead us to a fortress and the star road eventually, but this one cannot be completed without collecting coins in here. So you know, this entrance is not gonna work. As I tried earlier in the run, the first entrance in Donut Secret 1 is a no-go because of the coins blocking out the access to the key, but Vanilla Secret 1 might be our solution. In fact, this secret exit is pretty easy to get to without collecting a single coin. We now have access to Star World. Let's make good use of this, okay? Star World 2 is our first stop in here, and the only difficulty comes from not eating fishes with Yoshi. Besides that, we can reach out the secret key and move on to the next one, Star World 3. This one is super easy to be fair. Just throw a block on Lakitu, steal his cloud, go up, grab the key, and you're done. Star World 4 is easy if you have a cape or a Yoshi, because you can simply fly to the secret block and hit it with the cape, and on that note, we now have access to this star over here. Where does it lead us? Well, straight to Bowser's Castle. Nice! Bowser's Castle in Super Mario World is made up of different rooms that all lead up to the final battle. I picked a random door and went to this part with the fences you can climb on. It contained no coins, so we're all good. Then I ended up in this underwater section, and once again, there were no coins to be found in here. The last part to get to Bowser only features a couple of enemies to dodge and to defeat, and that's it, it's time for the final battle! Defeat Bowser like you would in a normal fight, and there you go! We have defeated Bowser, we have rescued Princess Peach, and all of this without collecting a single coin. We did it! Yes, it is possible to complete Super Mario World without collecting a coin! This quest is over, and it's complete. I'm so happy that this was possible. And to be honest, out of all the challenges I've done so far, this one proved to be the easiest, as I realized there's not that many annoying coins in Super Mario World, really. You know me. I don't really like to touch those yellow yucky things called coins when I play my Mario games. I'm sure that the fact that my name is Nico and if you rearrange the letters you can get coin is just a simple coincidence. But the fact of the matter is that we already attempted to beat Super Mario World without touching a single coin a while ago. Truth is, there's more to this game than simply defeating my boy Bowser. Super Mario World actually has secret worlds we can play. First off, there's the star road over there, and after that if you jump in this star portal thingy, you get to the special world. Whoa, this world really is groovy. It's tubular. It's awesome. It's cool. Kinda like today's video sponsor, Kart Rider Rush Plus. This amazing kart racing game is really good and features many tracks, characters, and carts to choose from. The game is entering its third season and bringing in a brand new partnership with Hyundai meaning you'll be able to drive the sporty Sonata N-Line car in addition to play the new tracks and new game modes. Check it out at the link below. The rules are simple. We are going to be playing all 5 levels in the Star Road and all 8 levels from the Special World without touching a single coin if possible. You see this lovely coin counter on the top of the screen? Well, we want to keep it at zero. All power-ups are allowed, and since you usually play the Star Road and Special World after you've completed most of the game, there's no problem with going back to previous levels to get more power-ups if needed. Now that everything has been set, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and let's just jump into it. This quest will start off with Star Road 1, which is a very easy level that doesn't really contain a single coin. Basically, just grab that lovely mushroom, get onto the right side over there, and start spin jumping to grab the key and beat the stage. It literally takes 15 seconds, top. Star Road 2 is an underwater stage that doesn't contain a single coin, so it should be fairly easy to get to the end, right? Wait a minute, what is that? Why do I have two coins? I didn't touch any. Well, turns out that eating enemies with the baby Yoshi turns them into coins that you automatically collect. Whoa, that's not cool. 
I decided to then ignore the baby Yoshi and just swim peacefully and was still awarded a dirty coin. Why is that? Well, the baby Yoshi might not be moving, but this fish over there is moving right into Yoshi's mouth. Come on, Yoshi, stop trying to sabotage me here. We're not playing Among Us, that's not cool. Anyways, grab baby Yoshi, move him out of the way, and then you can safely abandon him and swim your way to the key and finish this level. Star Road 3 is a super short level where you're normally meant to feed that yellow baby Yoshi some enemies to get him to grow big and then after you move up and whatever, we can't do that. Remember, if you eat stuff with Yoshi, you get coins. So instead, just visit an old level, grab a fully ground Yoshi and a feather cape and just yeet yourself up there to grab the key and finish this stage coinless. Star Road 4 is a traditional Mario level, you know, with platforms, Koopas and stuff, but no coins are in your way. In fact, I think there is no coins in this stage at all, so just grab that key and beat it. History repeats itself in Star Road 5, a level full of falling platforms and enemies, but no coins. Well, I mean, as long as you don't hit that block over there, because now you're about to get lots of coins. Fly up there, grab the key, and with that, the Star Road is done. So, is it possible to beat the Star Road in Super Mario World without touching a single coin? Yes, it's dumb, super easy, and there's no challenge at all. Now that we have reached the special world, I'm sure the challenging stuff will actually begin. Let's go! Special World 1, or Gnarly as the game calls it, wants you to make your way up this vertical section, and while these first parts are not that dangerous, you'll soon get to this part with the bouncing node blocks, the Yoshi cookies, and the deadly coins on the way. Oh, I forgot to mention in the rules that collecting Yoshi cookies increases the total coin counter, so we'll have to dodge them as well. After making your way up this hill, get ready to slowly glide down and my tip here is to hug that left wall over there. As long as you stay on the left side all the time, you'll avoid every single coins, Yoshi coins and basically anything on the way. Once you're on the other side of that pipe, get ready to run and fly your way to the end gate over there and there we go. We did it. Wait, what? I got a coin? Huh? Well, here is something I totally forgot about Super Mario World. When you cross the end gate, you'll definitely want to hit this little thing that moves up and down, because if you don't, it explodes into one deadly coin that you automatically collect. Ugh. To solve this problem, just land before the end gate, wait for this little thing to move down and touch it, and there we go. Special World 2 or Tubular is next, and this is a very hard pea balloon level. Playing this level actually made me miss the pea balloon from Super Mario Maker 2, because the original Super Mario World doesn't give you a lot of control with the pea balloon, and pretty much anything that touches you will kill you in this stage. Make sure not to hit this pea switch over there, as it makes a million coins appear out of nowhere, and you know, that's not really cool. You'll have to memorize which blocks contain a pea balloon if you aim to get to the end, as time is very valuable in this stage and falling down means instant death. I actually ran out of pea balloon at the end and had to use my cape feather to glide to the end gate and let me tell you that wasn't easy. I died over and over again while attempting the stage, but trust me, it is possible. Special World 3 is next, and this level does contain lots of on-off switches, rails, and many saws on the way. Some of those paths also contain evil coins, and it's not always possible to dodge them all while not getting hit by the saws, so you'll have to do some crazy stunts if you want to avoid everything. The second part doesn't have that many coins on the way, yay! But where it lacks in coins, it makes in fuzzies. Ugh, look at all those evil fuzzies. These guys are actually pretty scary. Special World 4 may be called awesome, but let me tell you that it's far from an awesome level if you try to dodge all of the coins. There are lots of coins to avoid in this level, and there's also lots of tiny troll Koopas kicking out their shells right in your face. Ouch, that probably hurts a lot. 
Since you cannot jump to dodge them, you'll have to run super fast to the right over there to hide before the shell hits you. The third Koopa is actually an auto-aiming shell dude, so watch out for that, but thankfully this slope here will help you out. Just slide and break the shell and you'll be good. The second part of this level is not making things any easier or more awesome. There's lots of flying cheap cheats that are out for blood, and with the coins on the way, your movement options are really limited. To be honest, you'll actually have to jump on the cheap cheap as they make their way on the screen to bounce above most of the coins. This is ridiculously precise and really difficult, but alas, it is possible to do it. Just get ready to die. A lot. If Special World 5 looks familiar to you, it's because it's actually the level that's being played in the title screen demo of this game. This level is full of pokies and they can really hurt you bad, so I suggest grabbing Yoshi if you want to make it far into that stage. Just know that anything that Yoshi eats turns into a deadly coin, so get ready to avoid eating anything. And yes, this includes the apples in the bushes. Bounce your way from one pokey to the next up until you reach the end gate. Oh, and once you're there, hold your horses, as these two charging chucks are way too close to the end gate, so if you cross it, they will get turned into deadly coins that you'll automatically collect. Defeat them using Yoshi, and only when they're truly gone, you can cross the gate and beat the stage. Special Stage 6 is not a very difficult level. There's the water that keeps pushing you back left, and there are tons of cheap cheeps on the way, but if we're talking about coins, well they're usually out of your way and you never have to touch them. You'll soon reach the green pipe at the end and beat this level. Special World 7 has a very difficult start, because there's this one big ugly Yoshi coin that's in your way, and you cannot simply walk under it because of these fire dudes and the wiggler next to them. Trying to jump above the coin is also a really bad idea, because Mario can't jump high enough. If only my boy Luigi was here. The way I managed to do it was to bounce on the wiggler above the Yoshi, and it worked! It is super precise and kind of hard to pull off though, so you'll have to be a little bit lucky. After you're done with that part though, the rest of the level is quite easy and you'll beat it in no time. Welcome to the final stop of the day, Special World 8, and the beginning is not very difficult, although it does start off with you having to quickly move out of the way before you get killed by this dude up there. That's the type of things people put in troll levels in Super Mario Maker, so I wasn't expecting Nintendo to be the ones doing that. <laughs> not cool, not cool. This part here is kinda difficult, because you have to use the flying Koopas to bounce above the coins if you wanna make it to the end of life. It's kinda precise, but it is possible. You'll soon reach those ugly coins that spell, you are a super player. Well, thank you for those kind words, game, but still, spelling this with coins is kinda cringe, bruh. So, is it possible to beat the special world in Super Mario World without touching a single coin? Well, yes it is! It wasn't the most difficult challenge ever, but it did contain a couple of difficult parts where we needed to use enemies to move away from the coins. I do have to admit that this wasn't the hardest challenge, but I'm actually glad I did it. This is the e-reader, one of Nintendo's peripherals, and the idea with the e-reader was to plug it into your Game Boy Advance and to swipe some cards that would unlock some special games and stuff. Super Mario Advance 4, Super Mario Bros 3 had this functionality and it allowed players to try 38 exclusive new levels. And you guessed it, today we'll be playing those e-reader levels without touching a single coin. The rules are simple. We are going to be playing all 38 levels from World E and will attempt to beat them without touching a single coin. You see the coin counter up there? Well, we want to keep it at zero. All right, now that everything has been set, make sure to subscribe and let's just jump into it. We'll begin this quest with the star cards and Star-1 is a remake of World 1-1 from Super Mario Bros. And I played this level quite a lot in the past, so obviously by now you all know that as long as you don't enter this pipe to reach the secret bonus room full of coins, then you'll be all good. Star-2 is a remake of 1-2. 
and it kind of feels weird to play this in the Super Mario Bros. 3 engine. I did try to get on top of the level, to get on top of the blocks and skip it all, but those coins didn't allow me to do so. I played it normally and it was pretty easy. You know what, I'm starting to wonder if all of the e-reader levels are just remakes of Super Mario Bros. 1, as Stardash 3 is yet again a remake of the first game. It's a remake of 1-3 to be exact. Just be careful of the few coins on the way and a couple scary jumps you have to do and you'll be good. Guess what? Stardash 4 is actually 1-4 from the original Mario. And as you can probably remember if you watch my previous videos, there are no coins on the way besides these Le Epic Troll hidden blocks. Avoid them, defeat Bowser, and you'll get a frog suit. Y yay, huh? Stardash 5 is the final remake level, and this one's a remake of 2-2, so it is an underwater stage. Swimming to dodge coins is quite easy. It's the bloopers that are actually difficult to dodge and ruining my life! Next up are the mushroom cards, which hopefully won't be remakes of Super Mario Bros. levels. Mushroom-1 takes place in the sky. And the first part is actually an auto-scroller, so it's kind of tricky. I'm also afraid of coins that are out of the screen, as the Game Boy Advance screen resolution is super low, so the game is like super zoomed in compared to the SNES version. Still, if you're being careful, this one is actually possible. In Mushroom 2, this first part wants you to slide and jump, but there are so many coins on the way! Thankfully, there is a leaf inside of that block. So just get rid of all of the enemies, start running, start flying, and you'll reach the end easily. Mushroom 3 is quite the weird level. There are some charging chucks from Super Mario World, and you can actually pluck veggies from the ground like you can in Super Mario Bros. 2. Man, these e-reader levels are kind of creative, eh? Coin-wise, this level doesn't feature too many and is quite easy to beat. Mushroom 4 was a wild ride. It's full of doors all over the place, and I wasn't sure what to do with it, as I was just getting lost in this ghost house. That was until I just flew up in the sky and entered this hidden door to fight the boo from Super Mario World. Yup, it's the exact same fight where you have to grab some blocks and throw them at the boo. Huh, that's neat. Mushroom 5 is an airship level where you actually enter the ship and keep playing the stage. There were lots of annoying coins to dodge, but the real annoyance came from the bombs scattered all over the place. Mushroom Dash 6 features a lot of those note blocks, so get ready to bounce all the time, but there are no coins thankfully. This one actually plays like a bad Super Mario Maker level to be fair. Mushroom 7 was odd, as the only challenge came from running fast on those blocks before they turn back into yucky coins and you fall down in the lava. Besides that, it's actually quite easy. Mushroom 8 is all about plants attacking you out of pipes. Sure, there's a couple of coins to avoid here and there, but it's not too difficult, so you'll be okay. Mushroom 9 features a lot of fire, lava and enemies in this castle but not a lot of coins. Just be careful and you'll soon reach the boss, who's actually Boom Boom the Mad Lad. Times two, huh, who knew Boom Boom had a twin? <laughs> now this is epic. Mushroom 10 asks you to hop on some para beetles, but as you can see, the screen scrolls really, really fast, and all of those beetles are actually located under those coins, so you kinda have to collect a bunch in order to beat the stage. So this one is not possible. Mushroom 11 is yet another level with musical notes all over the place. Just... why? Mushroom 12 is full of enemies, cannonballs and other things attacking you. There's not a lot of coins though, so we're all good. Mushroom 13 features two very tricky jumps. This first one where you have to go above the coins and then this one where you need to be small Mario in order to fit under the coins. Very scary level, but possible to beat. Mushroom 14 is a very short level. You have to do insane jumps under coins at the beginning and it's very scary looking, but after that, well, just run to the right and the end of the stage will be waiting for you, so that's nice. 
Man, these e-reader levels keep getting weirder and weirder, as Mushroom 15 features a feather cape from Super Mario World! Yes, the Super Mario World power-up in the Super Mario Bros. 3 engine! <laughs> what? And you need to do a very precise run and jump to fly up there and beat the stage. This took me many attempts to dodge all of those coins on the way, but eventually I managed a way to do it. But still, I have a feather cape in Mario 3! Like, that blows my mind! <laughs> Mushroom 16 is a castle level that starts off with you falling from a pipe onto a P-switch that turns coins into blocks and makes a bunch of silverish coins appear. In order to beat this part, well, you need to do a very precise jump to get to a platform as the silver coins disappear, but at the same time, those blocks turn into yellow coins, so the timing is very precise and oh so difficult, but it is possible. Sadly, once this part is done, well, your problems are not over, as you'll soon reach this part where you need to use a Goomba shoe to jump on thwomps. And sadly, there are way too many coins to get through this, so this one is not possible. Mushroom 17 is a weird level featuring the penguins from Yoshi's Island and a couple more enemies from Super Mario World. Seriously, what is up with this game? Was this the original Super Mario Maker game, mixing up enemies from all over the place and no one knew about it? <laughs> the weirdest thing in this level is that custom scrolling screen at the end. It keeps scrolling left and right, and you just have to crouch to avoid the coins, but eventually the screen will move back right and will allow you to proceed and go in the pipe. This level just doesn't make any sense, but whatever. In Mushroom 18, all of the coins are actually frozen solid, so just don't grab that fire flower over there and you'll be all good. Mushroom 19 is an easy level. It does feature a couple of coins, but we can actually avoid those without any problem. Mushroom 20 features one very difficult part where you need to jump in between some coins. As you can see, it's quite the precise jump. But yeah, once you clear this part, well, the rest is actually easy. Mushroom 21 is one of those levels where you have to keep running like a mad lad to the right. Sadly, I tried many ways to get through this first jump, but we actually need to touch some coins, as there's no way to go above or under them. So yeah, this level is not possible. Mushroom 22 is full of ropes to climb on, which is actually a mechanic from Super Mario Bros. 2. There's a bunch of coins to avoid on the way, but by being careful and actually planning ahead, you can do it. Mushroom 23 doesn't have that many coins, and the very few you can see can easily be avoided. On the other hand, Mushroom 24 is insanely difficult. Basically, you need to grab a feather cape and find a way to get enough speed to jump on top of those blocks over there. Then, you need to fly in between two rows of evil coins in the sky. Near the end, you have to let go, or else you'll stumble on some big arrows made out of coins. And that's not all. Once you're at the end over there, you'll have to defeat those annoying Lakitus and their spinies, or else they all turn into yucky coins when you grab the end card. <sighs> this level was actually a real pain in the butt, and I'm so glad it's done. In Mushroom 25, you need to dig just like you do in Super Mario Bros. 2. This will force you to dig left and right to avoid the coins, and then you'll have to make your way up and keep dodging a couple coins, but to be fair, this is quite easy. Mushroom 26 is a very difficult level. There are lots of fire bars underwater and annoying coins all over the place. Some parts were insanely tricky, forcing you to swim in between coins and those spinning bars that can send you flying all over the place at high speed. Eventually, after many tries, I did clear it though. Mushroom 27 is a castle level, and this one is actually difficult because of lava, statues, and other hazards. But for this quest, well it doesn't feature a lot of coins, so at least this is not an issue. Mushroom 28 will force you to remain small Mario if you intend to get under those coins over there. But actually, once this part is done, well the rest of the level is quite easy. Mushroom 29 doesn't feature a single coin, so this one is a total joke. The same thing can be said about Mushroom 30. This level has no coins either. Let's just defeat Bowser, and with that done, all of the Mushroom levels are actually complete. And all that is left for us to do are the PR levels. PR-1 is yet another airship level, and this one has very few coins, so no worries, you'll be okay. 
PR2 gives you a very strict time limit to beat it. And to do so, we need to keep running super fast and we actually have to get coins along the way. So for this quest, this level is not possible. PR-3 is actually a very easy level that doesn't feature tons of coins. So we can easily clear this one. So is it possible to beat the e-reader levels in Super Mario Bros 3 without touching a single coin? Well, sadly, no. Out of the 38 card levels, 4 were actually impossible to clear. But to be fair, that still leaves 34 that were actually completed. So in my book, this is a win. Plus, those 4 levels are actually cards that we could easily lose. Or maybe even cut in half. <laughs> I have played a lot of Mario games without touching a single coin in my life, and yet I still haven't played the very first Mario game, the one that started it all, Super Mario Bros. See, the thing is, this old game might be a classic and you know, the one that started it all, but it's one of my least favorite Mario games to go back to. The controls are not the most precise, you can't really go back to the left once you advance in a stage, and the graphics are kind of ugly. If only someone had the brilliant idea to remake this entire game using Super Mario Maker 2, then maybe I'd play it. You know what, I might actually know the perfect person for that job. Hey Mero, it's C- I mean, it's Nico. Can you remake Super Mario Bros 1 in Super Mario Maker 2? Cause I'm kind of lazy and I don't want to do it myself. Can you do it, please, please? Okay. Wow, that was surprisingly simple. Epic! The rules are simple. We are going to be playing every level that Mayro remade one after another, starting with 1-1, until we get to 8-4 to see if we can actually beat them all without touching one of those pesky coins. You see this lovely coin counter? Yes, well, it shall remain at zero at all times. If I end up collecting a coin, I have to exit the level and start over. No cheating. Now that everything has been set, let's just jump into it. 1-1 is probably the most remade level in Super Mario Maker's history, but who would have thought of placing a giant Goomba to make sure that the Goombas spawn close to one another? No one else than my boy Mero. So basically, if you never enter this pipe, you'll be okay as there are no coins up above, so you know, this very first level is quite easy. 1-2 has a couple of coins during the level, but you know the trick, break those blocks and go above the entire stage. You can't touch those coins if you're above the level. 1-3 is up, and this one is a little bit tricky, because it does feature a couple of coins on your way. Thankfully, these platforms are semi-solid platforms, so you can jump from under them very easily. There are more coins on the platforms near the end, but just time your jumps and you'll be done in no time. Welcome to 1-4, the first castle in this quest. And that first castle doesn't contain a single coin, so let's move on. 2-1 is up, and I love the fact that Mero used different course themes for the different worlds. It makes it so much more interesting. Basically, don't go down that pipe in the secret area once again, and you'll be done in no time. 2-2 takes place underwater, and this level does contain its fair share of coins, but they're never in our way. There's plenty of space in the sea to dodge them all and make our way to the next level. This next level is 2-3, a level featuring a couple of spooky spots where you need to jump in between coins and cheap cheeps, especially this last part before the flagpole. Whew, that jump was stressful. 2-4 is next, and this castle does contain a couple of coins, but you can thankfully just jump above them all to make your way to Bowser and complete the second world. 3-1 is super easy, because it doesn't even contain a single coin. Just make sure not to hit the question blocks or, you know, this lonely brick block which contains a lot of coins, and you'll be all good. 3-2 features only two segments with coins, and as you can see, they're really easy to dodge, as the coins are not even in your path at all. 3-2 3 on the other hand does feature a lot of coins in your path, so you'll have to be extra careful in your jumps. Thankfully, 
If you time them and take time and plan your route, you'll be all good. 3-4 does feature some coins here and there, but you'd have to jump out of your way to collect them, so yeah, there's no need to worry here. 4-1 is the perfect level for a good old speedrun. It does contain some coins, sure, but they're always super high in the sky, so you'll clear this one in a couple seconds top. 4-2 takes place underground, and those first three coins will force you to take the top path. Then, if you decide to take the secret exit, you'll find out that it's full of dirty giant coins. Come on, Mero, why would you do that to me, your buddy? Anyways, to get to the real exit, you'll have to wait for those Koopa Troopa to walk off the edge so you can make your way underneath those bricks containing coins up above. Cause if you decide to bounce on the Koopas, you will definitely hit the blocks and collect the coins. And that ain't cool. 4-3 starts off with a very tricky part featuring lots of coins. You'll need to do an off-screen jump to land to the right of these coins, which is actually easier said than done. Don't let your guard down once this jump is cleared, as there's going to be even more coins to dodge. 4-4 doesn't contain a single coin, so just find the correct path in the maze to make your way to the end. 5-1 is a very easy level and doesn't contain any coins for you to dodge, so it's an easy win. 5-2 does feature some coins, but none that are really tricky or anything, so you know, just go above or under them to clear the stage. 5-3 does have a couple of coins once again, but we can just go around them or even use the Banzai Bills to help us in this quest. Also, is it just me or do the Mario 1 Banzai Bills look very angry? Anyways, 5-4 is a clone of 2-4, except with fire bars, so once again, those 6 coins will be featured, but you know, you can just jump above them again and you'll be all good. 6-1 features some coins here and there throughout the level, but they're never annoying to dodge or anything. Just be careful and watch out for the annoying Lakitu who throws spinies and you'll clear this one. 6-2 has a grand total of zero coins, so you know, just play the level like you normally would. 6-3 has tons of coins for you to dodge, which is pretty fun. I'd say the most stressful jump is this one at the end, where you must jump from under the coins, but that's not even required, that was just me wanting to grab the top of the flagpole. 6-4 is up, and this one doesn't contain a single... C what? A Kaizo block with a coin? There? Come on game, are you serious? 7-1 doesn't feature any coins, but it does feature Hammer Bros, and from the look of it, I'm not the only one that died to them. 7-2 is another underwater stage, and once again, it does feature a couple of coins here and there, but they're usually super easy to dodge, as we can freely swim anywhere around them, so no need to worry. 7-3 features some cheap cheeps and some coins on top of the bridges, but you can thankfully dodge them all. If you fall down in the water, don't despair, as you can just jump on a cheap cheap to get back up. So yeah, this one's easy. 7-4 is a really lame level, and it's not even Mero's fault. The level in itself is really boring. Even Mero agrees that we should boo this garbage level. But you know what, Mero? I won't. I want you to get all of the maker points. Anyways, for the level, just follow the path with the Bowser statue to make your way to the end, and that's it really, it's just tedious, boring, long, but it contains zero coins. 8-1 starts off easy, having only some random coins here and there, and they're easy to dodge, but as soon as you go down that pipe and enter the second part, be ready to do a couple of very spooky jumps where you can't jump too high. Thankfully, 8-2 is super easy and doesn't contain a single coin in our way. It does feature lots of enemies though, I'll give it that. 8-3 is also very easy, as it contains zero coins. Just run as fast as you can to dodge the hammer bros, and you'll be all good. Welcome to the final level, 8-4, a level which doesn't contain any annoying coins. Just enter the correct pipes and use that turtle to reach this pipe there, and you'll quickly get to the final Bowser, and boy was I lucky to get that jump on my first try. So there we have it, we have completed all of the original Mario Bros level remade in Super Mario Maker 2 by my boy Mero. 
But wait a minute, there are some bonus levels. Let's try them, shall we? Undead 1-1 is a very cool level where you have to dodge the poison water which rises up at the very beginning. You'll have to do some very precise jumps to make your way to the end. And while this level is kinda hard, it is certainly not because of the coins as there are literally none. So clearing it with zero coins is really easy if you skip the bonus pipe. 1-1, but it's a castle, is exactly that, a remake of 1-1, but set in a castle with lava and fire bars. Going down to the bonus area is not deadly this time around, as you can just swim right back up. Whew. Besides those bonus coins, there's no coins in your path. Finally, the last bonus stage is called Escape the Minus World, and it is a nod to the infamous Minus World glitch in the original Mario game. Basically, you'll have to go through this underwater section 5 times to collect all of the red coins to get the key and complete the stage. It takes about 5 minutes to beat. So yeah, it's not my favorite stage. Sadly, the red coins that you need to collect do increase the coin counter, so you know, I guess this stage is impossible. But then again, it's a bonus one, so we can just skip it. So, is it possible to beat Super Mario Bros. in Super Mario Maker 2 without touching a single coin? Yes, yes it is! It wasn't the hardest challenge ever, as this first Mario game doesn't contain that many coins, and when there are coins, there's always a way of dodging them all. I want to give out a big shout out to my buddy Mero for remaking this entire game in Super Mario Maker 2. This must have taken quite a while. Check out his Maker profile, play all of his levels, and make sure to give them some likes. Give him some points, my dudes! Super Mario Bros. is a classic that everybody has played at one point in their lives. And if you haven't already, why don't you try playing it without touching a single coin? That's exactly what I'll be doing today, except I will be playing the sequel to this game, Super Mario Bros. 2. No, 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 not that one. The actual Super Mario Bros. 2, from Japan. It is also known as Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels. The thing is, I prefer to play Super Mario Maker instead of the original NES console, as it looks and plays way better. Luckily for me, my friend Mega has decided to remake every single levels from that game in Super Mario Maker 2. Thank you Mega, you're the best. The rules are simple. We are going to be playing the remake of Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels in Super Mario Maker 2, playing one level after another while avoiding touching those ugly yellow things that people call coins. You see this lovely coin counter on the top left part of the screen over there? Well, we want to keep it at zero. And since this is a remake, every level is a separate one we need to select, so there won't be any warp pipes or other cheats we can use to skip levels. We'll have to try to beat them all and hopefully this will be possible. Now that everything has been set, let's do this. World 1-1 is the first stop today, and this one is not very difficult, containing very few coins to dodge, so just avoid the many Koopas, plants and Goombas to reach the flagpole. 1-2 doesn't feature a single coin in your path, but it does contain a lot of green pipes, and almost all of them feature evil piranha plants. Be careful and you'll be good. 1-3 has a few coins here and there, but they're always located in very annoying places. Avoiding them all is not easy and will require a lot of precise jumps on those semi-solid platforms. You'll also need to keep running to get enough speed to make the jumps. It is a little bit difficult, but it is possible. 1-4 is the first castle level, and if you watched my previous Super Mario Bros without a coin video, then you'll know that Bowser's castle in the original Mario Bros games don't feature a lot of coins. In fact, most of the time, they don't even feature a single one. Hit that axe, defeat Bowser, and you'll be good to go. 2-1 is the perfect stage to talk about secret pipes in Super Mario Bros. They're located here and there in a lot of stages, and they all look similar. They look like this. Yeah, so as you can imagine, you don't want to go down those secret pipes, or else you'll have to grab a couple of ugly disgusting coins. Make sure to avoid going down the pipes and you'll soon get to the end. 2-2 has a couple of coins waiting to be collected up in the air, so you'll need to walk under them. There's one precise jump you have to make there under the coin, but it's not that difficult. 
So normally to make your way over there, you'd want to hit those secret blocks and you'd want to get on top of the pipe, but those blocks give out the dirty coin, so you won't want to do that that time around, but if you just run and jump above the pit, you can clear it, so no worries. 2-3 is full of flying cheap cheeps, and although there's a couple of evil coins here and there, they're all pretty easy to avoid. 2-4 does not contain a single coin, so this one's a freebie. World 3-1 does contain some coins here and there, but they're super easy to dodge, so getting to the end coinless is not very difficult. 3-2 is our first underwater stage in this quest, and this one does contain a lot of coins, but since we can swim around, there are multiple paths to avoid them. I have to point out that this part was very tedious, forcing you to swim in between a block and a bunch of coins, and that was a little bit stressful, but not impossible. 3-3 scared me from the very beginning, when I saw the thumbnail for the stage. I mean, that doesn't look promising with all of those coins, and actually that's the only part that will be difficult to clear for this stage. You'll have to jump from this platform to that pipe to then make your way up there while avoiding those coins. Really stressful jumps, but all possible. 3-4 is a castle, so guess what? It doesn't contain a single coin. 4-1 is the first stage to introduce Lekidu and this bad boy is annoying, throwing out spinies at me, and he got me at 1.2, so you know what, I just got mad, got my revenge, and stole his cloud to make my way to the flagpole. <laughs> Pretty sure that's not the intended way of clearing the stage, but it worked. 4-2 does contain more annoying Lekidus to deal with, but it thankfully doesn't contain a single coin. 4-3 does contain a couple of coins here and there, but they're never in the way, so avoiding them is not very difficult. This part here scared me, but I just decided to run and jump, and everything was fine. 4-4 contains a grand total of zero coins, you know, like every castle we've seen so far, so it is an easy one. 5-1 is also a stage that doesn't contain a single coin, so there's nothing to say about it. 5-2 takes place underground, and features this one single precise jump in between coins and blocks. It is scary and precise, but very possible. 5-3 is a very difficult stage, as it does contain its fair share of ugly coins. The ending is especially brutal, with all of those coins on the lift platforms. Thankfully, a very precise jump will do the trick, and this stage will be complete. 5-4 is a castle stage, so you know the drill, there's no coin- Whoa, whoa wait a minute, am I dreaming? Coins in a castle stage? Huh, <laughs> weird. Thankfully, they're all pretty easy to dodge, but still, what the heck? 6-1 is a level that gave me a really hard time. It is all fun and games, until you reach this very tall green pipe. There's no way to jump above it, and what you're meant to do is to hit this invisible block to make your way up there, but obviously the block gives you the dirty coin. I tried using the hammer bro, a bullet bill, and even a koopa to try to land on top of the green pipe, but it's just no use. However, I had this one idea I really needed to try before calling the stage impossible. What if I wait for the hammer bro to jump and then jump on his head as he is super high up in the sky? This might work, in theory, cause getting this to happen is extremely unlikely as this hammer bro's jumping pattern is pretty much random. I tried over and over again, failing every single time. Up until a million years later, every star aligned in the sky and this happened. Whoa, now this is epic. Woo, I'm doing the Mario dance because I'm really happy about it. I still cannot believe I pulled this off, but thanks to that epic gamer move, this level is possible. 6-2 is an underwater stage, so even though it features a lot of evil coins, there's a lot of space to dodge them all, so it's an easy one. 6-3 has a couple of coins here and there, but you can dodge them all very easily. 6-4 is a castle stage that doesn't contain a single coin. 7-1 also doesn't feature a single coin in our path. Same thing for 7-2, which is mostly a stage involving you standing on a platform moving to the right. Is it me or is this quest getting easier and easier? 7-3 does feature lots of very stressful jumps to make on those springs, and it requires lots of leaps of faith, which I am not a fan of, but thankfully, there's only a few coins near the end, and we can just make our way under them all. 7-4 does contain lava, fire bars, and other hazards, but it doesn't contain a single coin. 8-1 is also coinless, so it will be done in no time. 
8-2 does contain a few coins here and there, but they're always out of your way, so you can just ignore them altogether and you'll be good. 8-3 is easy and doesn't feature a single coin on your path. 8-4 has zero coins, as it is a standard castle stage. World 9-1 takes place underwater and features lots of enemies you usually don't see in that game theme, like Hammer Bros, Koopas and Lakitus. While it does have tons of enemies, it lacks any coin, so let's move on. 9-2 has a couple of coins on those semi-solid platforms, but it's super easy to just swim above them all. 9-3 does feature a hidden passage to the sky, and there you'll find lots of gross coins, but we're not even forced to go there, so let's just ignore this and make our way to the flagpole. 9-4 doesn't contain a single coin, but I mean, were you expecting anything else? A-1 does contain a whole lot of coins over there, but they're not mandatory, so let's move right instead and avoid them all. A-2 takes place underground and doesn't contain a single coin, nice. A-3 is a very difficult stage. First off, there's a lot of annoying cheap cheeps trying to eat you alive, which is pretty annoying. Then, there's the fact that those jumps feature evil coins and dodging them is not easy. To dodge those three coins over there, I actually had to rely on the cheap cheeps down there to make my way to the other side. Very stressful jump, but possible. And then, you'll reach this part. Uh-oh, how am I supposed to jump above all of those evil coins? There's just no way! Is this the end of this quest? Well, I thought so, but I had another idea that I needed to try before calling it quit. Near the beginning of the stage, there's this flying blooper there. Let's call him Bloopy the Blooper. So my new strat was to bring Bloopy with me to that part with all of those evil coins. Let me tell you, this is easier said than done, as Bloopy doesn't like to be told what to do. You'll have to keep baiting him and still do this epic cheap cheap jump too, but eventually he'll get there and... Ugh, I messed it up and I grabbed this coin. Ugh. One hour later, I did it. So yeah, it is possible. It's just really tedious, painful and slow. But still, thank you Bloopy the Blooper, I'll always remember you. A-4 is a classic castle stage featuring zero coins. B-1 doesn't feature a single coin either. B-2 has lots of cheap cheats and lots of coins, but once again, it is an underwater stage, so it is pretty easy to avoid them all. B-3 could have been tricky if it wasn't for the epic Banzai build that helps us move above those coins over there. Thankfully, the Banzai was there, so we good. Guess what? B-4 doesn't have a single coin. And guess what again? C-1 also doesn't have a single coin. Huh. C-2 is a bit annoying, because you'll have to avoid some coins while dodging the cheap cheeps trying to attack you. And this part near the end is really difficult and requires pinpoint precision jumping. But it is possible nonetheless. C-3 is an easy stage. Just grab a Likidu Cloud and move right. Sure, there is a couple of coins near the end, but we don't have to go anywhere near them. C-4 has zero coins, but it still has this hidden fire bar down there, and I got lay epic trolled by it. But by looking at all those little death bubbles, I'm not the only one. D-1 doesn't feature a single coin, what a shock. D-2 is also a very easy stage, containing a couple of precise jumps, but no annoying coins though. D-3 contains lots of hammer bros and bullet bills, but zero coins, so yay I guess. D-4 is the final level for this remake, and it is a castle level. So you know, we're good to go my dudes, let's just go down that pipe and get that epic victory ra- uh, wh What? Coins? What? Seriously? Unavoidable coins in a castle level? No, no, no. Unavoidable coins in the last castle level of the game? Why, Nintendo? Why, Mega? Why, everybody? So I decided to explore the castle and check the map online and found a mushroom near the beginning. I thought I could use the mushroom to break some bricks and maybe skip that level, but we are actually forced to collect some evil, yucky, gross-looking, stinky, poopy coins. I'm so sad. So, is it possible to beat the remake of Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels by Mega without touching a single coin? No, it's not. And that's because of the very last level, World D-4. Why would you put those coins there? Why? 
After the epic pixel perfect hammer bro jump, after the incredible bloopy the blooper jump, I cannot believe that this single room there with an avoidable coin is what defeated me. And this makes me a little bit sad. At the beginning of this month of October, Nintendo gave us a care package. They gave us a free game that will only be available for 6 months and I named Super Mario Bros. 35. What is this game? Well, basically, it's the original Super Mario Bros. for the NES, except you're playing it against 34 other players. Yes, it is a Battle Royale version of Mario. Now this is epic, but... Can we beat this game without a coin? The rules are kind of confusing to be honest. In fact, I think that before we get to the good stuff, we have to explain how this game works. Super Mario 35 pits you against 34 other players online and the goal is to be the last player alive. How do you lose? Well, there are many ways. The most obvious one is by getting hit by an enemy or falling down a pit. But as you can see, there's also this big clock up there, and if this one ticks down to zero, you're also eliminated. How do you get more time then? Well, by defeating enemies, collecting power-ups, and beating levels. Every time you complete a level, a new one begins instantly. So, how do we beat this game? Well, you kinda don't. It's a battle royale, so you just survive. For this challenge, we are going to have to be the last player standing, and all of this without touching a single coin. You see this lovely coin counter at the top left of Mario's screen? Well, we need to keep it at zero at all times. Sadly for us, there are many ways that this game will prevent us from doing so, but I'll explain everything as we go. So let's start that battle royale, gamers. First of all, the way the levels are selected in Super Mario Bros. 35 is via a level pool. So basically, before starting, all 35 players pick a random level via the selection screen over there, and all of the levels are then randomly shuffled, and this is what we'll be playing. Personally, my goal here is to survive without touching coins, so I picked World 1-1, which is the easiest level of all time. Doesn't stop some noobs from dying in the first 5 seconds though. <sighs> Anyways, World 1-1 is not very difficult, and there's not many coins on the way. You'll want to start building your time by jumping from one enemy to the next, because comboing enemies actually gives out a lot more time than defeating them individually. Normally, you want to collect as many coins as you can in Mario 35, because it allows you to spin the, the Wheel, Wheel of, of Epicness. Epicness. This Mario Kart inspired item block that can give you a mushroom, a flower, a star and a POW block. All of those items are super helpful to help us win, especially near the end game, when only the top players remain, but sadly, because we are not collecting a single coin, well, we're never going to be able to spin the wheel, which is kind of a bummer. World 1-2 is also not very difficult, as most of the coins are hidden in blocks and when they're not, you can always go underneath them and dodge them. Do not go and underestimate this level though, as it's going to be your best ally for this quest. Sure, World 1-2 can be completed by going through this pipe over there, but it also contains a warp zone that you reach by going above those blocks there. These warp pipes allow you to pick the next level you want to play, which is pretty cool, but it also tells you the future. You see, the way the level pool works in Mario 35 is that it is shuffled at the beginning, but everybody gets the same shuffle, meaning that the levels are actually in a predetermined order. The warp zone allows you to peek at the future and see the next three levels you'll be playing. For example, in that game there, the next three levels I will play are 1-1, 2-2 and 1-1 again. This means that in order to win this challenge, you'll have to start memorizing which levels are good and which levels are actually difficult. For example, World 1-3 is a pain in the butt for me. It takes place in the sky, features a lot of scary jumps, especially this one near the end over there, and I really don't like playing it while avoiding the coins. So if the warp pipe looks like this, I know that picking pipe number 1 or pipe number 3 will force me to play 1-3, which I don't want to. 
And if I pick pipe number one, then I'll play 1-3, followed by 1-2, and then 1-3 again. So I would have to play 1-3 twice, so that's a really dumb idea for me to pick that pipe. In that case, you'd probably be tempted to maybe grab pipe number 3, play 1-3 only once, and be done with it. But you have to take something else into consideration. World 1-2 always has a warp zone predicting the next 3 levels, so by choosing pipe number 2, I can actually skip both World 1-3s and get to the next 3 levels, which in that case were 1-1, 1-3 and 1-2. Obviously, I want to skip 1-3 because I hate it, so I picked 1-2 again. You see how this warp pipe comes in handy? In a game where surviving the longest is the only thing that matters, being able to actually pick your future levels becomes the pro strat. Keep that in mind as you play this game. Now, remember how I told you defeating enemies was super important because it gives you more time? Yeah, well, it can also be a problem to this quest. You see, every time you defeat an enemy, you send it over to someone else's screen, making their lives harder. Which is good, right? I mean, you want to be the last player alive, so making their lives harder is a good thing. Except if one of your enemies kills them. If that happens, you get a KO. And when this happens, all of the coins and all of the time this player had left will be transferred right over to you. Ugh, 55 coins? I, I don't want them, no thank you! That is one of the biggest problem about this challenge. You want to be the last player standing, meaning you need to defeat enemies to gather up time and survive. But every enemy that you defeat is a potential threat to another player and might end up giving you a KO and a bunch of dirty coins. How do you prevent that from happening? Well, you don't. It's random. You cannot control how other players play the game and what is going to kill them. However, you can actually do something to spread your enemies all over the place. Super Mario 35 gives you four attack patterns, attacking the player with the lowest time, the one with the most coins, your own attackers, or just attacking a random player. The random option is going to be your best bet for this one, because it sends every enemy you defeat to a random player every single time. This means that if you defeat four Goombas in a row, for example, well, every single one of those Goombas will be sent to a different player every single time. This spreads out your attack all over the place, and since you're never actually targeting one single player, well, they might not die from your Goombas, and that's good, because you might never end up getting the dirty KO coins. But once again, let me repeat that this is totally random, and sometimes you'll just get a KO and we'll have to deal with the fact that somebody made you lose that challenge. <sighs> You're a meanie. When that happened to me, and it did happen a lot, I was a little bit sad, sure. But I kept playing to try to practice learning the ins and outs of every levels to avoid collecting the dirty coins. You know, while we're on the topic of levels, World 1-4 contains some hidden Le Epic Troll blocks over there that give out one coin each, ruining your run, so be on the lookout for those when playing the stage. World 2-1 also contains an invisible block down there, so I usually try to move by jumping on top of the platform to avoid hitting it. World 2-2 takes place underwater, but there's always some place to swim to avoid collecting those dirty coins. Now, if you end up playing World 2-3, I'm sorry, you're in big trouble. This level takes place in the sky, is full of cheap cheeps, but mostly it is filled to the brim with evil coins that are super difficult to dodge. I have attempted this level a couple of times, and I never was able to beat it coinless. In Mario 35, that is, because when I attempted the original game challenge, I managed to do it. But yeah, avoid this level at all costs if you can, and if you end up there, well, it's pretty much GG to be honest. Oh, I forgot to mention it, but the maximum time you can have on your clock is 400 seconds, meaning that any seconds you get after that will not be added and will kind of be wasted. This means that once you reach 400 seconds, you can start taking breaks. Yeah, for example, collecting a bar up gives you an extra 15 seconds, which is good. But if you already have 400 seconds, nothing stops you from chilling for a little bit and waiting 10 seconds to collect it. 
This will help you relax and focus, but will also prevent you from defeating too many enemies that could potentially lead to a KO. Now, with all of those epic gamer techniques, you should be starting to see yourself improving as you play and getting further and further without touching a single coin. I'm not gonna lie, this quest is not gonna be easy and mistakes will be made. You'll get some defeats and some more and even more. And sometimes you'll end up getting chaos or touching a dirty coin out of nowhere by accident. This challenge is not for the faint of art, but one day, oh, one day, you'll start a match with 1-1. You'll start killing enemies, start getting a lot of time on the clock, you'll memorize each and every single level this match will throw at you, your opponents will start vanishing one after another, doing some noob gamer moves, but never giving you a dirty coin-filled KO. You'll be filled with determination, and at one point, five players will remain. The victory will be getting closer and closer, up until the top three players. <sighs> Look at them collecting coins. Oh, how their life seems easy looking from here. Then one will fall, and you'll be in a one-on-one -on -one situation. You'll start sending your Goombas, Koopas, and eventually, yes, yes, the epic victory royale, baby! Oh, look at this, I'm number one, zero coins collected, now this is epic! Wait, 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 what's going on? Why am I getting coins all of a sudden? What are these 750 bonus coins? Why do I get a hundred more? What is happening? <laughs> well, here's the explanation, gamers. Remember how getting a KO gives you the defeated player's coins, yeah? Well, when a player dies by falling down a pit or by a standard enemy, well, their coins are put inside this little treasure chest down there. This is the bonus chest, awarded to the number one player. This is where the 750 bonus coins came from earlier. Ugh. So, is it possible to beat Super Mario Bros. 35 without touching a coin? Well, um, yeah, but no, yesn't? You see, it is possible for you to never touch a single coin and end up getting the Victory Royale, but as long as other players are collecting coins, the treasure chest will keep filling with bonus coins that you will be given at the end of the match. But wait, I hear you say, what if every single player alive was doing the without a coin challenge? What if every single player never collects a coin? Then the chest will never get filled with coins and the winner won't get a bonus, right? Well, yes, but doing this challenge alone is already difficult enough, so expecting all 34 other players to do it as well and to succeed at doing so? Well, you'll have more chance of winning the lottery, I think. And for fun here, let's pretend that happens, yeah, okay? All 35 players are doing the without a coin and they all succeed. Well, remember how the bonus chest was 750 coins and I still ended up with 850 coins at the end? Well, this is because of this one single thing there, the rank bonus. That's right, Super Mario 35 gives you a set amount of coins based on your final rank. And for the first place holder, this bonus is 100 coins. So technically speaking, no, it is not possible to beat Super Mario 35 without getting a single coin. The minimum amount is 100. Ugh, why do you do this to me, Nintendo? Do you have any idea of how many tries it took me to get a victory without touching a single coin? Do you have any idea how much time I spent doing this video? And all of this for 100 bonus coins at the end? <laughs> why am I doing this to myself?